Mm-hmm. And and so so when you're when you're going through stress, uh, spirit, spiritual stress, emotional stress, it actually changes and alters the chemicals and output in the body. Uh, so cortisone, you've got dopamine, you've got all the kinds. Of, so uh, there, there's a, a God has gifted us a wonderful relationship with a uh, a doctor down in Alexandria, Louisiana, named Doctor David Remedius, which is a a, a very uh, uh, powerful prophetic minister who pastors a church and also is a full time MD uh, <laughs> doctor that uh, um, is. Wonderful. I mean, I can't even, I can't tell you this, this, this literally, I would travel down uh, to Dr. Remedius' house in Alexandria, Louisiana, and he'll prophesy over you and, and, and let the Spirit of the Lord touch your life. But then also he'll schedule uh, you to come in and, and have a procedure done. <laughs> so That's how it should him. be. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so I'll go to him and, 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 you know, I even worked with people in my church that going through difficult situations. I would go get them to a doctor and say, we've got to get uh, some blood work done. We've got to know how your chemicals are in your body. So going through all of this stress, realizing that it does impact you physically, emotionally, and and so forth, uh, you have to take care of your body. So I I begin to take a better uh, understanding of my diet, exercise, um, things of that that nature. Then also church attendance. and And then so for me, this did alter for me. Because I was used to being the, pa- the the pastor of a church responsible, you know, for bringing forth the message that uh, for the Lord at, at, at that it was it was very difficult for me to sit in that congregation just to hear a typical message, and so there was a season I went where I, I just could not find it in me to even go to church. I, I just couldn't uh, hear just a um, a pre made prefab message. I needed I needed to hear from God. And uh, and so th- that was uh, a real challenge for me. And uh, then I went to a a, a church and uh, was able to he, he preached preached a message, and I knew I knew God spoke to him. And and then at that point, he I knew this man actually goes and seeks the Lord for a word, and that that helped me. But church church attendance was a challenge for me, and that during during that warfare, uh, it was it was difficult there, and. Uh, but now I've become more, uh, um, as a minister, transitioning more toward ministry now uh, to more traditional ministry, I have more compassion about individuals uh, who maybe can't make it to a, to a church service or are going through warfare, are being challenged in ways uh, that, that sometimes someone uh, in a in a church setting, may not under understand is is directly. I have much more compassion and understanding uh, for not only the uh, spiritual aspect of warfare, but 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 also the uh, the humanity in the warfare. You know, it's interesting because going back to how we started this um, interview, talking about you know w- how you got into the ministry to begin with, and God told you to create an environment that miracles could be, you know, pers- and you know, I'm sure you know that in the in the Bible, miracles that Jesus performed were always preceded by compassion. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, he was moved in his heart first before he was moved in the in the natural to to do something uh, for for somebody who came forth. And I think that's just how God works, right? He uses all of the things for our good, even these types of situations. And I love that, um, you know, for me, a marker of for my clients when they are going through healing from this type of abuse specifically, because you're exactly what you're talking about. It takes a toll on every single aspect of who you are. It, a lot of times, it, you know, my clients, it takes a toll on them financially. It takes a toll on all of their relationships because the narcissist has isolated them, which which kind of in your situation, how you're talking about, you know, controlling and gathering up your your people, right? And you have to be loyal to me. And, and that means that we don't like these people and um and so you know it does devastate so many areas of your life if you don't understand how to safeguard and put up you know and even if you do understand that it does it just takes a toll on you um emotionally physically it's one of the most i think overlooked aspects of of the healing process is that your body needs to transition from 
a trauma environment, right? Where there's mm-hmm. that kind of, that's a toxic environment in every single s- sor- sense of the word, not just for your mind and your emotions, for you, how you speak relationally to people, but your mm-hmm. physical body needs to transition. And so, um, you know, I, I always use it as a marker of, of how healed somebody is, is like, they can tell me more good things about the situation, how they've improved, how they've learned more about themselves, how they've grown deeper in their identity and how they understand their purpose more. All of these things are markers of, okay, that that thing has served its purpose for you, you know, in, in the positive sense. And like God's, uh, uh, the, the cycle that that thing needs to go through is completed. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's you've, go, you've gotten what you need from that situation. Now you're mm-hmm. ready to use mm-hmm. that wisdom into a new season that does not include this. And so um, I love hearing that, you know, for you, that there ha- really has been this kind of um, uh, uh, shift in the way that maybe you view people's situations and such i think it gives you more of an insight in how to be a better pastor and be a better just friend right to people who are going Mm -hmm. through um and that is the and that is the journey i mean we're all on this journey called life and and and, and, you know you still have to pay your bills every month even if you've gone through trauma yeah and so you've got so you (laughs) life doesn't life doesn't stop for you because things aren't going right and you still have to go to work and you still have to look good for work and present yourself well and and yeah. you know you have to have income coming in so you can pay the, so life goes forward even though inside you're going through this this almost death process mm-hmm. it is a, tr- a grief process inside mm-hmm. oh yes and 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 so that you know so really you have to have a strong community you have to have a strong faith but there are times that I went through isolation where 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 the 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 the, the you know, say depression I'm not really one prone for depression but mm-hmm. if you go through so much uh you've extended so much mental energy yeah. to deal with and coping with uh, uh a toxic environment uh you just want to be by yourself and quiet you, you, yeah. so I would fish I would literally mm-hmm. fish I love, I love to fish and I would there was a this river runs right through the middle of the city and I would just go to a, 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 this rocky sandbar on there and let the water just move and I would just catch fish and and that was kind of like my therapy in a sense but um uh, but that that it is God God does supply us healing and and uh, he's a god of of nature just as well as he is of institutions and when he when uh, he yes. was uh in stress he he went to the garden of Gethsemane he would walk in the in in the wilderness uh, right. the prophets would go to the wilderness mm-hmm. uh I think there's something um uh, helps us to be to be a part of nature in some aspects. Yeah. That, that to be, understand something that when we connect to God and connect to the environment He's created, it's conducive for for healing and and for growth. Absolutely, yes, I totally agree with you on that. And and I also think it's important for people to understand. You know, just as you were mentioning, you would go fishing. You know, God created you with your interests, your likes and your dislikes, and those the things that you like were meant to edify you specifically there's a reason why you like that you know and Mm -hmm. it's it's healthy for you to pursue the things that you enjoy right because it it puts your everything everything in your body uh reacts to your mind and so when Mm -hmm. your mind is in a place of stillness your neuro your neurochemicals your hormones all of your blood chemistry can try to come back into a place of balance it gives your body time to decompress and just work through everything that's that's already been going on in your Mm -hmm. body and balance things out so uh, you know i just encourage people to allow yourself that because i think a lot of times people think no i'm going through this stressful time i can only be in the stressful time. I can't I don't I can't afford myself to go rest or fish or you know check out mentally or whatever it is for for somebody, you know, quilting or reading or whatever it is for you. That mm-hmm. is that is God has given you that that route to have that safe place. You know, the mm-hmm. safe place looks different for every every one of us. So, uh, have mm-hmm. grace with yourself and allow mm-hmm. yourself the things sure. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 invite God on that fishing trip or, yes. or that jog uh-huh. or, you know, use that as a time that you can actually talk, not not just rehearse the problem, but yeah. but you can go through mentally and just say, you know, God, I don't I don't understand this. I'm 
uh, you know, God, God, just help me get my emotions in the right place because I feel like my emotions are just all over the wall, and I and I, and I and I don't know uh, where to invest my emotions. I I don't have that that anchor, and 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 God, I need you to, to be my anchor, I, um, to anchor my emotions, to 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 be my source of strength for my family. Uh, you know, God, I trust in you. And uh, so, God, help me. I know I you have. I need you right now in the midst of this storm to be my anchor, to be that one that calms the storm. And yeah. then at that place, God listens. But but he, but he does. He draws me out toward water. He I, he draws me out toward the river. He draw he draws me out in nature, and and I, I have peace. And then so, but God, God will give us all a, a sanctuary and a place of, of peace. But I say, you know, invite the Holy Spirit with you. And, and uh, even if it's just a walk in your backyard, you know, That's it, right. it really yes. is a place. And by the way, there's lots of scientific research as well about the effects of being in nature um, mm. that it has on our bodies, even just being barefoot, just touching the ground with to, mm. you know, your feet to the ground for 10 minutes a day, just 10 minutes a day. Wow. Uh, same thing with the sunlight. If you look at the sun, yeah. not directly, but directly. if you are <laughs> in the sun yeah. and uh, for 10 minutes a day, the effects that it can have. We're talking about not just short term effects. Obviously, there's Long a. Term. Yeah, long-term effects, health, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. longevity, and and things like mm -hmm. that are increased. So, we, it is so important. I'm a big believer in using every single thing that God has given to you. You don't just, yes. you know, it's a mystery how my body is feeling this way. It it really isn't. Go to a doctor, <laughs> you know, read a book, <laughs> follow some people who under who have authority and understanding in that um in that particular area that you're you're experiencing because you know everything that god created is is unto us is unto our benefit mm -hmm. unto our um our highest potential and so mm -hmm. it's really important that we understand that we know how to use that you know all I, of this stuff is created for us yes 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 and and god you know mm -hmm. god 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 truly truly ha has has given us the ability for full total healing that that's yeah that's, uh, body uh, yeah. mind and spirit Oh yes, and but but we have to understand that those are three distinct components that have mm -hmm. distinct needs and mm -hmm. uh, and and environments by which they can be healed, mm -hmm. and so yes, heal the mind. God can heal the mind, will, and emotions, the body, and mm -hmm. the spirit. So when you have this this full full person, yeah. full per, uh, healing, that that's when you find true victory or or uh, solace uh, peace uh coldness that 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 that's where we find but you do have you, you have to understand god has created this environment uh to for our healing uh and he yeah. and it does do just that oh i couldn't agree more with you i i i personally just don't believe in in any type of thing that's not life right so sure sure any kind of illness sickness aging aging is a slow death I just believe in in nothing but life, and so whatever problem you're facing, not only is there a solution, it's within your it's you already have it. You already have access already to that solution. This is not something that you got to go you know travel the globe tr to try to find. It's it's available to you, you know, right now. Um, Agree. Of course, you have Holy Spirit living in you. You have immediate access to the mind of Christ and to any, any problem that you're having. There's already been a solution. Long before that problem was created, the answer was already created. You know what I mean? It's like the problem's the illusion. The problem is sure. actually the illusion that the answer is already there. It's just about Agreed. getting your place, getting yourself into a place where you can access it. So, so when you, um, when you, go back and you think about, you know, what you have been through over the past 12 years, what advice might you have for leadership, right? Because again, we have a lot of resources on what to do if you're the victim of a spiritual abusive situation, if you're a member, a congregant, a whatever, of, of an, a, a religious organization, a spiritual organization, but not so much for people who are involved in the leadership of that spiritual organization. So what do you, from your perspective, hindsight being 2020, as they say, what would you say to people who are in, how do, how do they prevent it? How do they spot it? What are some red flags that might go up if they're experiencing it? 
And ultimately, do you have any advice on how to overcome it or get re- remove themselves from that situation? Well, yes. Uh, we're we're taught. Uh, I guess first and foremost, say as 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 men, you know, we're taught not to show weakness um, in our society and in our culture. Uh, it's it's almost shamed uh, shamed or looked down upon for a man to uh, show weakness and our vulnerability. And then you see that that can translate. Not that all uh, leaders are men, but when but leaders uh, are a position of authority. We're told not to show weakness, you know, not to say that I'm wrong or that I need deliverance, you know, that I have a problem with fear or control or manipulation. You know, at some point in some place that it, those individuals that end up it, with influence governing over numerous individuals, assets, uh, uh, people and assets of, a, of an industry or so forth, um, they chose uh, they learned as a as a as a mechanism to to use control and manipulation to gain power, and so it was a it's learned. And you know, it, you, you don't just wake up one day and be a manipulator. Uh, it, it you you manipulated uh, in grade school or in school or in relationships, and then that translated into work relationships, then business, and then how your governing style, and then. So that's that that default, and they and they become masterful at at painting a narrative of one thing while 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 manipulating behind the scenes, and um, and then so uh, and it, and it's and it's uh, also true, and studies have have shown that that those kind of personalities, those controlling, uh, brash uh, or narcissistic personalities, are more likely to get in leadership positions. <laughs> um, uh, uh, so you're gonna. Uh, so, that, so that's uh, that's. Yeah, I'm sure you probably have have some statistics on on that. But narcissists end up being promoted. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. Yep. We and reward that, them in this society. Uh huh. That right. Well, so that so that, that there's something, you know. So for leaders that are going into leadership, especially within a God breathed institution. And I'm going to say for profit, non for profit. But if you have, if you if you feel that you know, if God has been has the one that established that that business, then He is the source. Uh, you're not the source. He is the source. He gives the fruitfulness. You may labor, or you may plant, you may water, but it is God that gives the increase. And then, so as believers, and he, and even if, we, if we're a believer li- working in a secular in- institution, it's still being it's still governed by the rules that God has established throughout creation. And uh, so uh, we partner with God. And as a good leader, uh, an, individ- who, a, an individual that actually takes responsibility for the lives they govern over, then at that point they must be submitted to the Lord and they must refuse the easy way out, the, the path of least resistance. Do not take the path of control and manipulation. Uh, do not deal with anyone else uh, uh, the way that, that you would not want to be dealt with by God. How does God deal with you? How, how, how would you want God to deal with you? And then I would pose that to those, in, th- those leaders today if, 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 uh, if I was sitting across from them and, and, and would say, how would you like God to, deal, to lead you, to, to, to address you? Because at the end of the day, we all serve unto the Lord. And all day, and all of us will answer to him one day. And then, so do you feel that that you are giving the same kind of grace and mercy to those individuals that you have led, the impact you've had on their lives? Are you giving to them what you would want God to give to you? And then I would I would uh, definitely try to put put them in the mirror. But at the same uh, time, I would also address the 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 the. Leaders are wounded just as every as, as we're all people. We all come out of situations that can shape our leadership and our thought processes. And, and I would think it's very important for leaders to be very introspective uh, about not only how their decisions impact their own lives, but how their decisions impact the lives of others. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, what is my life? going to stand for 
you know, are, what are what what is God going to say of me? And then at that point, what what is my what is the impact of my life? And is life nothing more than just a, a race to gain assets and wealth and power that that dies? Uh, it, you know, you don't carry that with you. And uh, and then so I would I would check my priorities and I would submit my priorities to the Lord. But first and foremost, um, leaders must uh, be yielded uh, to God. And there has to be a, a, a vulnerability. Uh, uh, they have to become they have to become comfortable with vulnerability and and saying, "God, I don't know." Or when I make a mistake, just say, "I made a mistake," and then and then ask for those that are under your leadership uh, to forgive you, and 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 then have accountability. But to realize uh, a badge of authority does not make you lord over someone's life, and. Uh, and, and you have to have each other in this partnership. Yeah, so much there. I love the accountability part. And I also love that it starts with each of us taking accountability of what's in our own hearts, not letting stuff pile up, not letting stuff go unchecked, right? Because too much of that, that eventually comes out in some form that isn't how you want it to, whether that's anger or it's be belittling or whatever it is. And speaking of that, you know, as you mentioned, leaders are people too, and people in positions of authority, even within religious structures, are also people, and and betrayal hurts, and these, um, you know, having somebody come against you, come against, you know, maybe attack your family, or attack what you stand for, or lie about you, or any kind of thing like that, that also still hurts, you know, it's, it's wondering, how did I get in this position? Why do I deserve that? You know, how dare somebody do this to me? What do you say about the role of forgiveness in the healing and recovery journey for you specific? And what advice do you have for others in terms of the role of forgiveness as well in their own journey? Mm -hmm. You know, and I'd like to say that that um, a lot of the unhealthy uh, uh, decisions and leadership uh, within an environment, they are products of that environment just as much as they are governing over that environment. They mm. learned to survive within yeah. an institution that Very used good. fear. Yeah. You know, so they started out, you know, on the bottom rung, and they and they learned how to climb that that ladder. Uh, by using the very techniques that were successful within that dysfunctional uh, system, and then yes. so one, once you so once you get to the top of a dysfunctional system, and dysfunction got you to the top of it, well, d dysfunction is what's going to keep you there. Mm -hmm. And then so for for them to have a, a a renewal, and then and then them to have a change of heart would would mean they would need to resign because no, you know, may, maybe yeah. that maybe they could they could reform the entire structure, but but at the end of the day. You know, if it's a dysfunctional structure built on a particular aspect of of of, you know, uh, of greed or so forth, then that all that's got to be uh, uh, removed. Uh, yeah. it, it is it, the root has to be cut out. But as far as forgiveness is is concerned, you know, I um, never, you know, I never want I, ne I never got into a personal relationship with the individuals that in that I I could discern from a distance. Uh, uh, were operating uh, through control and manipulation and so i never even though at times they would try to you know ha come into a relationship i knew i knew it was it was just for manipulation i knew so they they did not want the relationship because they valued who i was they they just needed me to be on their side so they could uh, enact a decision that i needed to sign off on and be a rubber stamp for 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 their uh strategy um and and so I never became personally attached to them in a way that their attack, uh, you know, got so deep into me that I, it, I took it as a betrayal. Um, I think that 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 is a difficult thing in churches uh, or uh, when you have a close knit relationship between like a pastor or a church leadership in a church congregation. And just the very nature of the relationship is so intimate because you're you're talking about in a part of people's lives and in, in, in ways that 
that there's there's really nothing that's off the table. You're dealing with spiritual growth and the family, and you're a part of each situation. And then any any time that there's control, manipulation, or dis, uh, mistrust or distrust in, in the relationship, it looks like a betrayal, and that can lead to intense damage on both sides. To where the you know there's when, when pastors go through hurt, are they betrayed? And, and as being a, I was a pastor uh, from from 2000 up to 2011, a senior pastor from 2003 to 2011, and I can't tell you how many times I was betrayed and threatened uh, just because I was a pastor, and uh, not and uh, it, so it is a challenge. I, uh, to deal to deal on that level, but you have to get up the next service and still have that heart of compassion to pray to hear from God and 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 to preach and minister. So forgiveness becomes uh, a lifestyle, and, to, and I have to learn to forgive me. And that, that that's where vulnerability comes in. As long as if if I show that I vulnerability that I make mistakes that I'm growing, that does not make me weak. Me- meekness is not weakness. I can be a strong leader in my authority, strongly and decisively using my authority and standing up on, on my righteous decisions. Uh, uh, but I also need to be vulnerable and transparent about my motives, a- and then and then have that heart that uh, that does give forgiveness freely, but also receives uh, forgiveness freely. And first and foremost, I have to learn to forgive myself. When I make mistakes, my shortcomings, and then to forgive others and not to hold against against them, and uh, and and so it, it, like, like, forgiveness is a lifestyle, both, both internally and personally for me, and and for those that that I have relationship with or, and, and around me. I'm I'm constantly in a place of of forgiving. Yeah, it's it's part of any type of relationship and. I, again, everything is an outpouring of what you have within yourself. And so I love that you mentioned you need to forgive yourself because if you can't forgive yourself, it's going to be impossible for you to give other people because you, you never learned how to give and receive you know, within yourself, it's going to be impossible for you to actually do that with other people because there's still going to be a, 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 a a root of that issue within you because you didn't forgive yourself along with that person that can always spiral more and more. Um, and and before when you were talking about um, people would actually need to like leave the system because the system, you know, they came up in the system, the system rewarded them for this type of mm-hmm. behavior. It's impossible to now be like, hey, I see the light and uh, all of that stuff, it's its out the window. We're, we're doing things right now, you know. Uh, I think that's so important for people to understand, right, is is that you're, you're going to be – I actually have had clients who will try to use the narcissist tactics. So they'll try to use the name-calling, the gaslighting, the stonewalling, and not get the same results. It's like, yeah, you didn't – that's not going to work for you because this is a completely different system. You know, it's right, like exactly right. Mm-hmm, it's like coming to the U.S. and and instead of changing your dollars over, you're trying to barter with whatever currency you come with. You know, it's like mm-hmm, no, that mm-hmm. we we're not taking it. And it's the same. It's the same method. It that's a completely mm-hmm. different source of power. It will not work for you. You don't understand that mm-hmm. system. This person came up in that system. This person understands the use of that system. It's it's in them through and through. Ingrained. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's ingrained in them. They're. I, I really like the way that you say that about currency because control and manipulation and are, are those yep. tactics are only a vehicle. They're That's only right. currency. That's right. I, I, but to, to accomplish a particular uh, yeah. agenda, but it has power only in a system that makes it legitimate. So when so our dollar is just paper. It only has power because it is backed by the U.S. government, and it says that piece of paper actually stands for something. So within that system, within that, within that construct, it, it, it works. Well, then, if you have a construct that, that, that control and manipulation uh, is the currency within it, if you're, you, you, you can't just stop the control and manipulation without uh, changing the actual construct by which it is empowering it. 
Yes, yes, exactly. That, that I think it's such a good point and it's so important for people to understand that, right? Cuz even if you know, by some miracle the narcissist themselves change, that doesn't mean that everything is automatically going to shift in it because their entire mm. world, their entire existence is is supported because of this system that created them to be a narcissist. Every kind of thing would have to get changed over. And like we're talking about with, with money, imagine if one day the government's like, we're gonna change all of our money. How how long of a process and how many uh, you know levels and layers of society would have to get changed with that? The government would have, every kind of thing would have to get oh. changed. And so it's like that, it's like thinking about it that way because it you know again we have a very narrow um view of what this means and what this entails and that's why i wanted to do this interview with you is because a lot of times people only see it from from them their perspective if they were uh abused in in a church or you know in some sort of religious you know structure or uh religious institution they only view it as like okay that that system abused me um, but they don't understand that, hey, that's an actual system and it's abusing every kind of thing that comes into it. Does not, it's not you didn't get targeted just by your own self. There's an, there's a whole structure that supports and perpetuates this type of behavior. And it rewards it. And there, and there are certain it. people. Yeah. So if you have, uh, whether it be, well, there, there, throughout history, there, there have been governments, uh, that have, that have used, uh, fear, intimidation, and violence to control populations. And then there, there are times that even people that are from the abused population will elevate and become abusers uh, and work for uh, the oppressor o over uh, that because they're rewarded by that system and that, and, and that structure. And it is, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fearful, uh, you know, it is, it's amazing to see how fear governs so much of our uh, uh, our lives, our government, our society, and then how to be free from that fear. And those that have learned how to, how to um, survive in that construct where, where fear is ever present. Uh, so they, they don't feel the, the presence of God. They do not feel about that, that, that there is a good God that is, that is supplying for their lives. They have to survive by their own strength. And it comes down to a survival that we're all, uh, you know, still animals, uh, and, and, and survival is, is something that's, uh, that we learn to do. And even in the heart, most harsh situations will adapt. And so some, uh, we're placed in this construct where where fear and intimidation and abuse is rewarded, and then those individuals are elevated. Well, guess what? They're going to just perpetuate that same activity, and it's going to hurt uh, other individuals. And so there there, there have to be an, an abandonment, literally, of the construct of mm -hmm. the abusive system. I absolutely, could not agree with you more. And hopefully, that also sheds light onto viewers who maybe never have had personal experience with narcissistic abuse, then they understand why you can't just tell somebody, leave it, you know, because it's not that simple. Every kind of thing has been ingrained and enmeshed in the system by design. By design, it's been this way where it's all controlling, all pervasive, and it's very difficult to unt untwine your um, outer life, If especially, you know, I think, it's impossible to be honest with you without doing it first in the spirit. Yeah, um, I agree. Mm -hmm. um, before we wrap things up, do you have anything else that you'd just like to impart to the viewers? Any kind of thing that you want them to know that maybe we didn't touch on or just any final thoughts that you might have for the, the audience? Well, you know, I, I would like to say, Angel, on a, uh, again, I so appreciate the opportunity just to discuss uh, th this is uh, very cathartic for me to to, to discuss all the, <laughs> these items. You know, God brings healing. Um, yes, yes, exactly. That's right. But, uh, so I would I would say that I I've always had in my life, whether it be in ministry or in uh, per, you know, uh, whether it be in in ministry or in secular work, I've always loved people, and I've always wanted the best uh, for people that that I'm close to. 
and I've, I've never desired harm for others. That, that's something that does not naturally come from me. And then so I would encourage uh, um, anyone listening to live a life of thankfulness, uh, thank, thankful that, that you're that you're alive. Learn learn to appreciate your own life, and then and then also find ways to help other people because people are struggling everywhere. There 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 are times that I've gone into a grocery store and seen someone that I that I, I looked at and I could tell were were um, uh, just trying to choose between uh, one meat or this meat or this product or that product because they just didn't have the money to pay for it and they buy their groceries or or see someone you know when god when god tugs at your heart to help someone in a struggle we're all in a struggle we've all experienced trauma and so we need to be intuitive uh, around us instead of criticizing people uh that that are around us that that are in difficult situations we need to pray for them and see how we can assist uh and and ask god so become a people of compassion that does look at our fellow uh, 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 humanity uh, around us. How can I help them? You know, how how can I make this world a better place by one act of kindness? And then, and then also, we have to learn to be kind to ourselves. You know, some some statistics say that eighty percent of our thoughts are negative about ourselves. And well, if that you know, we we need to start flipping that coin we we need to start being thankful for ourselves and our own lives and we need to remember the good things that are inside of us even if no one else you know uh, believes it we need to go to god and have and have him so uh, uh having that 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 moan of compassion and love for our for our fellow ma- our fellow man but also for ourselves um i would say to live a life of of compassion and love a life of vulnerability and transparency. Sincerity is what I would say. Sincerely, sincerity just means transparency or authenticity. Uh, have an authentic life, and um, and and then uh, engage God uh, daily, personally. Not not just in through organized uh, uh, church services or organized religious structure, but engage God in, in, in engage Jesus Christ on a daily basis as a friend, a companion uh, to journey with in this life and then walk with him and then allow him to take you through personal deliverance. God delivered me from the construct that, that has abused me and don't let it replicate through me. Sometimes it's like a virus that gets injected into us and it just, it just uh, replicates itself through our cells. And when we come into trauma, sometimes that trauma tries to replicate itself through our thinking and our hearts and our relationships. And then so that daily walk with God that says, God, I, you know, I've been, I've been attacked by this, this construct or this trauma and, and God, I need, I need deliverance from this and uh, uh, help me uh, in this process. And uh, so uh, I would encourage every individual to literally partner with God in every aspect of, uh, of their lives and live a life that, that values the right things, yeah, yeah, that other people, God, ourselves, the wholeness and, and life that is around us. We are cultivators. We are just as much cultivators of life and healing and and prosperity and fulfillment. We are just as much cal- cultivators of that in this world than we are to cultivate trauma and dysfunction and hatred and violence. Mm-hmm. And so it's just, and we can be just as, so if, if we see how the negative can harm so many people, and then I promise you, the good empowered by the Holy Spirit is so much more powerful. And if we deal with that trauma, and we see what what narcissism and 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 control manipulation does, that that's only a fraction of what of what God can do through His people when they choose to build environments of health and life and wholeness and healing and prosperity. That's what we need inside of ourselves, a commitment to build a better world, a better order, a better relationship, and a better us through our partnership with the Holy Spirit. That's what I would encourage. Uh, I would encourage every person to be excited uh, about the hope and life that you can bring to this world and have a vision of what God can do through you. Wow. Yes, I couldn't agree more, Mark. That's so, um, it's so poignant to what I believe is 
needed in society especially now is you know we don't we don't there's always going to be problems you know there's always going to be trouble but it's what you focus on that's going to multiply and trusting that in you know imparted into you naturally from from the time that you were even a thought from the time that you you became a spirit before you even had a body that you had the power to create abundance within yourself create prosperity within yourself create wholeness within yourself life and health and all the other things and learning how to steward that again within yourself and being authentic uh, with that, you know, not, this is not a a show of you know I'm blessed and highly favored, and meanwhile my whole <laughs> life is like a disaster. You know, we, we have right. people like that, and and so it's not it's not that it's not a it's not a show. It's just being. I, I love how you started saying be grateful, be be thankful. Mm-hmm. You know, thankfulness precedes more things to be thankful for. You know, being grateful for what you have now makes the space for you to be grateful for the increase that comes. Oh, yes. And I think it's just so important that people start that way. You know, every single day you have things to be thankful for and focus on those things first thing before you mm-hmm. get to the, you know, I need this and it would be great to have that and I'm, I've really been seeking the Lord for this thing and it hasn't come. Before any of that stuff that you remember how much you've been blessed with and how grateful you are for for that blessing. Um, And I like what you talked about with helping others. I think that's such a key. You know, giving and receiving should be one motion, just like breathing, you know, breathing in and breathing out one, one, but we just call it breathing. So giving and receiving should just be one word like (laughs) Regiving, <laughs> something like that, and so it should be one word. And looking for, you know, the thing that you wish somebody could do for you, or you know, hey, it would be nice if somebody would say that or do this thing for me. Do that for somebody else and create the space, create the cycle of that in and out motion, that giving and receiving. You know, if uh, if, if there's ever been a time, you so know, there have been times that I've been on the side of the road with a flat tire, you know, and need help, you know. Mm-hmm. And well, I I was I was uh, driving to a meeting and I had a, a suit and tie on and and uh, a, a, you know that a white shirt and, and when I was going to be a part of a like a gala kind of a thing and and it was all business and I was so busy trying to press to get you know on 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 the road and I saw someone with a flat tire and they were just unable to get it. Uh, working and I literally felt the Lord just impress on me uh, uh, you know and I've, I've been there before where I've needed help and God has sent help so I stopped in the middle of my busyness <laughs> and with my suit and tie on and and I changed that tire and got and ensured that that that, that family was was uh, back on the road in, in a safe vehicle and, and and unless you've been stranded with with a car that's running hot, or, or, you know, and you don't have anyone to call, you know, to, to get a record or to get it fixed, unless you've been in a place that you feel that vulnerable, then, uh, then you really don't understand what that person's going through. And maybe you haven't gone through that. But when you see someone that's going through uh, a traumatic situation, it, it, you know, ask God, it, it, is this a, p- a place that I need to intervene? And either way, no matter what you can do, Maybe you can't change a tire, but you can assist somehow. And too much, we live our lives so busy, and we're and, and we're passing up opportunities constantly to build a better life, to for other people, a better community, acts of kindness. Uh, but I, there have been times that I have needed help, and God has sent help. And when I see someone else in in need, uh, I am I'm inclined uh, to uh, to give to give where I where I can. And I think others should do the same. Absolutely. I, I, I completely agree with that. And, you know, it's funny we're having this conversation because I was just telling somebody at church yesterday that I'm really in a season where I I just truly feel God is in control of all of my affairs, you know, all my businesses. Fantastic. And it's it's just, yeah, it's it's like, you know what? My only job is just to be and allow his presence to come out of me because every, 
you know, everything has already gotten a predetermined end in my, you know, not that we don't partner with that, but it's just like, you know what, that's, it, it doesn't, it doesn't need to consume my thought life and therefore my actions and doing. And I don't get my identity from doing all of these things and being all these things to all these people. And so I'm just really in a place of like all that stuff, it just, you know, it's fine. It doesn't even need me, you know, which is the truth. God doesn't really need mm -hmm. me to do that stuff. He chooses us, you know, right? We're, we're called mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and chosen. But, um, you know, just being uh, connected to the present and what's going on, it's like there's so many opportunities for us to be the hands of Jesus to people who we wouldn't even see. We normally wouldn't even, we wouldn't, we would just look over them. We would just, um, you know, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be in our vision. And uh, those are, that's like the first purpose, right? We're, before you, you, yes, you have a family, you have commitments, you know, your job, your business, your home, your car, all the things that you have, you're responsible for, you know, you're first responsible for the people around you, you know, and one, this was a, a few months ago, I was driving down the road and it was like all of a sudden I became so aware of the, the poverty mindsets around me, <laughs> in the cars around me. And I was like, no wonder we don't have more prosperity and abundance. It just not not even monetarily. I just mean connection, you know, to, to things mm -hmm. and, and to purpose and things like that. Because I just became aware of like the collective surrounding atmosphere of me. And mm -hmm. um, and it's just like, you know, you can impact that. You're a very powerful you person. Yes, you're powerful. You matter. You make a difference. And one person stopping makes all the difference to that person. That family on the side of the road, they'll remember that forever, right? They're going to say yeah, God sent somebody. And and it's about that 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 life-giving uh connection. And God honors that as well. When you when you honor him by by being his hand extended to someone else, uh you know, he there, there's a release uh, uh, an impartation to your life. Yeah. But have you ever been in a conversation to where the, the person was listening not to hear, but they were listening to respond? Oh, yes. Oh, and you, you can always I mean? tell. <laughs> <laughs> so as you're talking or you're sharing, they're just processing what they're about to say. They're, they're not really listening to the heart behind what you're, what, what, what you're trying to express. Uh, and I think sometimes we can live life that way. It, it, it is we're, we're just going so fast about our concerns and what we want next uh, that we're not living in the present and we're really missing the value. We're, we're really li missing the opportunities that God is laying out before us. Mm -hmm. um, and through through those connections, I, I, I have been a part of, uh, you know, these the the big uh, shindigs for corporations up in uh, New York or DC. We were always in DC about every three months and mm -hmm. going to the big galas and you know, you're, you're paying, uh, you know, almost a thousand dollars for a plate just to sit at the table and everybody shows up and we're there so engaged to in, in meet the next person beside them and exchange business cards and so forth. I mean, they are so engaged to have connection with individuals that they may feel can somehow benefit them. Well, what what if we just uh, had that level of engagement emotionally to people around us just every day in our churches, in our families? You know, there, there, there are families that don't even speak. I mean, how how much healing would come to a family if we just engaged each other? Uh, not for what you can do for me, but because I love you. And um, uh, it, it is a mind. It is a mindset. And uh, and it is something we uh, we need to see. And engage other people as valuable and have and has value, and because when you engage other the common person with 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 value, not what not a parent, you know, but just the value that they have, you also begin to see that I have value, and I don't have to manipulate, and I don't have to control, I don't have to do this external facade to make people like me. Uh, I have value because God intrinsically has placed value in me. And that person across from me uh, in the store, or the restaurant, or in, in a business meeting that maybe you just overlook and walk past, or maybe ne never remember their name, maybe the janitor that's walking down that collects the trash every day. You know, maybe it, it, do, you, do you reach out to them with a meaningfulness? It, it, at that point, 
if you can find value and see people value in their story, their life, and who they are, then it, then you can say, I can have, I have value intrinsically. I don't have to use all these fake facades and tactics of control and manipulation to 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 be to feel powerful. I I I, I have value with just who I how God made me. And that, that's a lot of the key to, to deliverance uh, yeah. uh, for, for a lot of individuals. Absolutely. And it's, it's recognizing that you have intrinsic value and also recognizing that you don't need some sort of facade in order to protect you. You know, it's, sure. it's letting those things go so that you can discover, hey, I actually am powerful. I am valuable. I can make a change. I do impact people's mm-hmm. lives. You know, all of that by by allowing yourself the opportunity to connect in the moment and with other people. I always tell I people, you know, you can't I can't meet I can only meet you as far as you've met you. You know, so that's as deep as our ah, connection is going to be. So if you that's haven't, dis- that's yeah. profound. <laughs> <laughs> right. So if you haven't discovered your true value, who you actually are, your identity and all of that, I can't either. You know, it mm. even even mm. if I know, even if I can see what the divine will is mm. for you, I, it doesn't mean that that's going to happen because you didn't meet that. You didn't mm. meet that person who embraces that's my purpose. This is my identity. This is who I am. And so whatever whatever version of you you've met is the version that I'm going to get. You know, I actually yeah. with my clients, I ha- I'll, I'll take like a pen or something and you can look at it this way. And I don't have a pen, but you can look at it like this way. You see it as like a line. And then you can look at it like this way. And it's like a dot. It's just like a point, mm-hmm. you know. And mm-hmm. at any, I could cut that pen up into 10 different points. And that mm-hmm. when I take one and then that's the point that I met the pen at. You know, for example, right. a natural object. Mm-hmm. But how many points in somebody's life are you meeting? Maybe you're meeting them at mm-hmm. a really low point and you get to be the thing that, you know, connects, mm-hmm. that bridges the gap between that point and then the next season of their life because your kindness, your compassion, your ability to just see them, your ability to just acknowledge you know, you're valuable, you're worth me st- stopping and pulling over the side of the road to um, to change a tire, even if I have plans and it's a fancy, you know, people more important maybe than you, but I'm gonna stop and change your tire. So when you you can bridge somebody else's gap and that's that's the point of, of what I say is like, depending on the, the perspective and the place that you meet that person you just don't you don't have the full story you don't know what it is going to go on with that person in 10 years and 10 minutes you know it so it's just like being, it can be life changing oh absolutely and and you know i've act, i've i've all, i'm sure we all have but i've personally experienced truly life-changing connections because somebody decided you know what you're worth investing in you're worth me taking the time to explain this thing to or help you learn this skill or you know whatever it was and 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 I've had that many many times um and it's I I always say there's no such thing as um a self-made person right because we're we're all connected we all grew up in an environment and even in the difficult situations uh, grateful for it because it made me who i am you know the people that i thought were working against me were actually the the chisel god was using Mm -hmm. to chisel more jesus out you know of of, well that well that that's how we get discernment too you know oh absolutely the situations yes. that I've gone through, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I can promise you, I will never be tempted to use control and manipulation because I mm-hmm. know how devastating the effects are. A when thousand you're a, percent. When you're, right. So uh, the negative situations around us uh, lets us, it, it, it gets us where we can sense it very clearly. Uh, so you sense it before you ever get close to that, oh, that yes. control and manipulation. Yep. And so God does give us um uh, discernment through that. And yeah. one, one aspect that I also uh, uh, do in my life and with my family and my mom and all of us is that we rehearse God's miracles through yes. the years where he has sustained us. Mm-hmm. So we'll sit down and, it, and it's not a weird thing. It's just a matter of, oh, do you remember that time? Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, and, and, uh, and so we have so many miracles in my family where God just supplied for us. And we rehearse those miracles because we, we always want to know that God is our provision. And, and that's key for, for our, uh, to live a healthy life. 
actually, I was just speaking with somebody yesterday who was telling me, who's recounting to me some miracles. And it's just like, I just could never get enough of it. You know, I just want to hear more and more and more about <laughs> what is God doing in the past? Because, you know, the word testimony means do it again. Mm -hmm. And it's like sure. that is building my faith bank account. I can re re remember and I can just pull it out when I need that that one. You know, it's available to me. And and that's the power of connection as well, because when I'm involved with somebody else, I see their breakthrough. I've walked with them through that breakthrough thing. It's 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 not just another testimony. I've got an authority now in that. You know, mm -hmm. I'm ready to to walk somebody Praise else God. down that same map. You know, in that same pathway <laughs> to the same uh, outcome. So, I I love that so much, and I think I just think it's so important that people recognize the most valuable thing is all around us. It's in another body next to us, and we don't even know. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't when we can get out of our own way and our own stuff and we see, okay, this person, you know what? They are a little snappy because they are having some major health concerns in the family or major problems in communication or breakdown in sure. relationship or whatever it is that they're going through. And you might be the thing that can speak a healing word and bridge, again, that section. And so it just helps you know, we all need each other. Well, I think it's just so important. Yeah, and and as we are healed uh, as an individual, we're not as easily offended. Yeah, absolutely, and, yes. So, so if I if I don't have a, a a place for the curse to light on, it's not, it's just not going to light. It's not going to influence me if someone says something negative about me or yeah. snappy with me. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I don't I, I don't have to react. To, to that in the same the same place. A lot of the times if we react negatively, it's because we have an unhealed area of yeah. our lives. It's it's hitting something that we actually believe to be true about us. Right? Mm -hmm. When some so when somebody says something and we get offended, it's actually because mm -hmm. there's part of us that believed that. That we mm -hmm. actually have right. a belief in, in us that says, mm -hmm. I agree with you and I hate that right. you just pointed that out to me. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. But when you, yeah, when you were talking about discernment too, it's, you know, or using control or manipulation. Actually, I was talking with my pastor, this is probably a couple of years ago now, but, um, you know, he had said to me, you know, I think you, you should actually say something. I was talking about a situation. I can't even remember what it was now. I, I just remember what he said to me mm -hmm. about it, which was, he said, you know, you should really say something in that situation. I said, absolutely not, because that person has free will and they, they get to make their own <laughs> choice. And, you know, and he's like, okay, like, good, but also maybe they don't know, you know? And right. so I, I'm, I was at the opposite end of the spectrum. Like, not only will I not use control and manipulation, like, if you don't see it, not my job to point it out you know <laughs> and <laughs> and so <laughs> it's coming back into like you know i'm going to offer you another perspective it's up to you if you want to take it or not and what you want to do with that or not but you know it is coming into that balance part part mm -hmm. of it but i will say most people who who do get totally healed will take the 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 extreme opposite approach of mm -hmm. i'm just I'm, I'm assuming everybody, you know, has it all figured out in their own head and I'm not going to point out any kind of thing, you know, and that well, it, we need to come my, back to the middle. <laughs> yeah, my, my, my goal has always been uh, judge, judge my intent. OK, judge me by mm. my intent, even though I That's may not good. say something yep. co correctly. Yes. Uh, judge my heart. A am I an authentic person that actually wants healing in your life? Well, th th this goes back to that. I will not control and I will not manipulate that that is in absence of relationship when you have relationship you can lead and you can influence and the Holy Spirit leads and influences us every day he does not control us and and he does not manipulate and so but that is in the presence of relationship and then so uh, if someone comes out of a controlling uh, environment where they've been damaged they may they, they may not be able to distinguish the difference between control and leadership uh, or manipulation and influence and that's where God has to we have to purposefully get educated uh, what is the right way you know what is the right way to love you know and uh, what is the right way to receive love and then and then god god is the, is a is a, a loving gracious god that will always love us right even if we try to love him wrong and and then so we'll learn over time and the engagement but god will never reject us 
it, it, as long as we're coming to him with, with a sincere heart, as broken and damaged as we are, maybe we've never learned how to receive or give love. Well, we can learn to love correctly by, by learning to receive and give love to God. And, and that, and that is just that, that, that process of, of healing. But I encourage, you know, I, I, I used to get, I had a nickname one time that I was, that was doing business in Louisville, Kentucky and plant, assisting in planting a ministry there. And the leader sat down and he said, I'd like to tell you, um, uh, something I like about you. He said, he said, you only put poor water on what is living. You never, what you never waste it. And he said, I like that about your leadership. And then he also said, you know, I call you the velvet hammer. He said, because you can say some of the hardest things and people will take it from you because you love them. And, and I think, I think that's where we kind of fall in that, in that, in that area. Uh, when, when you've, you've, you have a testimony, uh, Angel, you've gone through difficult things and you've come out and survived through that. Well, then sometimes you just, you have to say it like it is when you, when you help other people. I've come out yes. of some crazy situations mm -hmm. and, it, 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 as long as I say it with the heart of love and, I, and my, I'm, I'm authentic about it, I mean, like my intent is for them to be better at the end of the conversation, then then if, then, then I, I believe it'll be blessed. Yes, yes, absolutely. I definitely agree with that. And once again, it's the importance of community and having leadership and building trust and building true relationship where you've walked through difficult things and you've allowed that to change things about your character that need to get changed, things about my character that need to get changed <laughs> in a community that's safe and um, and where, where true love is being not only shown how to be given, but also received. I think that's so important. It's one of Agreed. the the best things I, I honestly ab above every other kind of thing that I love most about my pastors are that they do that very, very well. They wow. are, do not allow people to walk all over them. They, uh, they, but they accept everybody, right? And if you're mm -hmm. sincere in your apology or you're sincere in wanting to make a change, it's they, I have seen them give forgiveness to people that I would have been like, to get away from them already you know um and they they are so good about showing that in a healthy manner and um and it's something that i'm just super grateful for but um uh, mark i really appreciate your insight and wisdom in this conversation i know so many people are going to get touched whole healed blessed because of this and because of your willingness to share your testimony I'm wondering if you wouldn't mind just saying a prayer for everybody before we close out, um, just releasing and imparting the the boldness, number one, uh, uh, to, to do whatever it is that God would have them do, whether it's to stay there and make a safe place for other people, whether it's to get out of that situation and expose what's happening to, to somebody who can make a difference, whatever it is, just that they would be able to walk out God's purpose for them. And in the meantime, recognize that that situation is as much for them as it is for mm -hmm. other people, you know, within that organization or structure or whatever they might be experiencing themselves. Sure. Well, yeah, I'd be, I'd be honored to, 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 to pray and, and uh, just ask God to impart uh, his presence. Yes. God, we just thank you right now, Father, uh, for your love. Uh, your that, that your relationship with us is true. It, it, it is exactly uh, what it is supposed to be, Lord. That you love us right, and God, I just thank you for bringing forth healing and re and restoration in the lives of any person that is watching this podcast and desiring to to have that. And God, I, I, I just reach out to uh, to you, Father, for all those individuals that are in work situations, our family situations, our ministry situations uh, that have been challenging. That that they don't they're at a crossroads, but they don't understand exactly what what decision to do next. And I, Lord, I ask you to give them a vision, give them clarity, because if they know their destination, they know what 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 turns to make to get to that destination. So, Lord, may you give them clear vision 
right now, God? What is their purpose? What are you giving them authority to accomplish now? Whether it be to stay and to build a safe haven and to ensure that a ministry or a business stays on track, or whether or not it's time to just move into a new area because uh, uh, you have a new thing, a new stage of transition them to a new stage. And so, God, I just ask you that there be no confusion, uh, but that a settling in the minds of your people that are listening now, God, and that they that they will literally, God, you'll, you'll, they'll see the vision, and then if they'll know what decision to make, when they know their destination, then they will know what decision it needs to be made right now to advance toward, toward that goal. Lord, I ask you, uh, Lord, just for protecting, protecting the hearts, uh, the minds, uh, the emotions, uh, uh, our, our bodies, our spirits. God, just I pray for a full whole wholeness, restoration and protection uh, for everyone right now, Lord. And may there be an impartation of clarity, an impartation of vision, a, an impartation, uh, Father, of insight that they know not only the times and seasons, but also what decisions that are advantageous in this season. And so, God, I just ask you, Father, for clarity of discernment, but also wisdom. And, Lord, may we receive that uh, fully and with, with boldness. And, God, I ask you for opening up our hearts where, where we've been damaged, where we've been hurt, where we've been withholding forgiveness for ourselves or for others. God, I just ask you that you supernaturally touch our hearts, that we feel the shackles of, of, of anger and resentment and fear fall off. And, God, we feel an uh, a, a upwelling of love and compassion uh, in, for those that are around us, Father. And, Lord, I just ask you for this uh, healing and this time of restoration in this hour in the lives of your people in Jesus name. Amen. Yes. Thank you so much again, Marcus, for joining me today. And for all my viewers out there, if you want to connect with Marcus, you can find his contact information in the description of this video, along with a more full bio so you can learn more about what Marcus has done. And Marcus, just once again, thank you so much for your willingness to share your story, a part of your story, at least with with my viewers and and for wanting the best for them to get uh, to, to not only become aware, but to get free, to live the life that God has destined uh, for them. So thank you again so much for your presence here today. Well, thank, thank you so much for the invitation. It's been, been, been a blessing and a wonderful time to spend with you. <laughs> thank you.